Here is a simple example of using the second derivative test to find relative extrema. So the function we're starting with is this polynomial function. And to find the relative extrema using the second derivative test, I'm just going to go over this, the exact same steps from my last video. Um, first, you have to find the critical numbers, and that's where the derivative equals zero. So obviously, we're going to take the derivative, which is 12x squared minus 12x, and find out where that equals zero. The easiest way to find out where this equals zero, because it has more than one x, is to factor it. So we're going to factor out a 12x as a common factor. And then solve each factor. We'll get x equals zero and x equals one. These are the critical numbers. Now, normally in the first derivative test, we'd, we'd make the chart to see where the first derivative changes size, but we're going to use the second derivative test. So the second derivative test, you plug these critical numbers into the second derivative. So let's find out, let's calculate the second derivative. The first derivative was up here. So the second derivative is going to be the derivative of the first derivative, which is y double prime equals 24x minus 12. I'm going to factor that now. You don't have to, but I'm going to factor it just to make it easier to calculate if this is positive or negative when I plug in the critical numbers. So that's the second derivative. For the second derivative test, all you need to do is now plug these two critical numbers in. So when you plug in x equals 0, into the second derivative, you will get 12 times a negative 1, which is negative. So there's a maximum at x equals 0. When you plug in the next critical number, 1, to this second derivative right here, you will get 12 times 2 minus 1, which is positive. So this is obviously positive, which means we have a minimum. So the last thing I'm going to do is actually find the minimum and maximum values. You have to just like with the first derivative, you always, when you're getting a point, you're always plugging it into the original function. So we said we had a maximum at x equals 0. So when you plug in 0 to this function, you'll get 3. That, that is pretty obvious. So we have a max at 0, 3. When you plug in the 1, which is where a minimum occurs, uh, you'll get 4 minus 6 plus 3. That's not too bad. That's a negative 2 plus 3, which is 1. We have a max at 0, 3 and a minimum at 1, 1. Uh, now, you should take your graph and calculator just to check. Um, or you can use Desmos. Everybody has access to Desmos. so. I use Desmos right here. I know I had it somewhere. There it is. Um, reminding myself that these were my men's maxes. I I plugged the original function into Desmos, and if you can see here that's a 
maximum at 0, 3. And looks like we have a minimum here at 1, 1. So it worked. That's easy. So um, I'll give you some easy practice problems. And you shouldn't find that this is, you should find that this is not bad at all.